Romans 12, uh, Paul explains how we are like a body and that all the different parts of the body, us as a fellowship of spiritual seekers, of Christians in our case, we're the body and then each person is like a different part of the body and we're all equal. And Paul talks about how, you know, what good is the foot without the eye and the ear without the nose? He uses that, that analogy. And then here, in this next, at the, in the very beginning of Acts 13, he tells us the value of loving each other here. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Here's a nice one from uh, Hebrews. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So let's not give up meeting. We have some excellent fellowship here at Christ Fellowship, of course. Amen. And uh, hence the name. And then now for service. In the big book, Bill tells us about how when all else failed, service to another alcoholic saved him from drinking again. I have a friend who was out in, uh, who goes out to AA out in Beverly Hills. And she told me about seeing all the, I won't tell you their names, but she told me about seeing all the various celebrities that you'd find in there. you find these movie stars for pouring coffee and uh, emptying ashtrays and sweeping the floor and things like that. And this is how they promote service in AA, one of the ways. Okay, chairing meetings and speaking, telling your story. Those are other service outlets, you know, that they, that they insist on virtually that you do in AA. And then modeling and sharing the message with another alcoholic is the ultimate uh, AA service. And that's step 12, incidentally, also. Now, the Bible tells us that we reap what we sow. One of my favorite quotes is, I'm going to say it dramatically here, sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. Sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. I love saying that. In other words, if you do bad things, worse bad things are going to be coming back down to you. In AA, they teach us that we are ultimately responsible for all the tribulations, all our own tribulations. They try and teach us to get out of the blame game. And, uh, you know, I remember, I remember the night I became a man. It was uh, in the backseat of Cindy Lou's car at the Summer Twin Drive-In. Just kidding. That was not it. It was the night I read a book by Emmett Fox called the Sermon on the Mount, a sort of key to the sermon. And the idea of accepting responsibility for all that happened to me just sunk in all of a sudden. Yes. I was like, oh, I see now. All my troubles are of my own making. And I got so excited. You know, it was what they call an epiphany. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I can't blame anybody else. And I remember calling them and telling them I got it, you know. Many times we get the idea that just not doing bad things is enough. Many of us can get through the day without breaking a single one of the Ten Commandments. I didn't murder anybody today, you know. Does that mean we didn't sin? No. No is correct. We have a debt we owe God for all the things He has given us. Just like we pray in the Lord's Prayer, which is also part of the Sermon on the Mount, forgive us our debts. We are still committing the sin of missed service opportunities. Jesus tells us to help widows and orphans, the poor and prisoners. Let's take a look here. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you, are blessed. Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom, prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Have we done that this week? Here he makes it quite clear that we're really supposed to do this stuff here in 526. 
But everyone who hears these words of mine and, and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. I try to start each day thinking and praying that I will recognize and act on any service opportunity the Lord sends me. I learned that on a trip to Colorado this summer. You know, it wasn't really a mission trip, but it just kind of became one because I just prayed that every day, and each day some service opportunity presented itself right in front of me, and I was able to, to recognize it and act on it. All right, Matthew 7, 17. Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. You can tell a real disciple by his fruit. Yes. Do you have any fruit? Kelvin, he's got me up here talking today. Kelvin's, Kelvin's doing it. There's also for us Christians the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. It's pretty similar to AA Step 12. We need to, to each and every one of us, be somehow involved in apostolic missions. And we have been here at Christ Fellowship. You guys helped send me to Indonesia last spring. The Moseses are still over there overseas and we've been helping them and praying for them and supporting them. All right, there you have it. Growth, fellowship, and service are the bread of life. And with just enough faith to give it a shot, it can, this spiritual program can transform your life just like it has mine and, and many others, many of in this room. So what I hope is I've inspired at least one of you today to move forward into the spiritual drop, diet and just give it a try for 90 days. Just, I'm just going to give it a try. You can come to any of us here at Christ Fellowship for help. We're here to help provide the resources for this spiritual program. Like if you want to go on a mission trip, we can, we can help you with that. We can do it if you feel that if you feel that that's your call to do that. Or if you want to help with the church here or sing with Cheryl, we'd love to have you do it. And that would be yes. your service. Yes. And so the next time you want to change, and then I'm going to ask you, that the next time you want to change the way you feel, before you take a shot of liquor, take a shot of God first. Yes. Take a hit of yes. God. Take a drag of God. Yes. Take a swig of God. Yes. Take a puff of God. Yes. Take a toke of God. Before you bite into that chocolate cake, take a big heaping bite of Jesus' bread. Yes. Hallelujah.